And the Pope came out with a book this week, which contains a series of essays examining faith and morality in today's secular world and the changing role of the Catholic Church as it approaches the 21st century. The book is entitled, God Himself Told Me That O.J. Is Guilty. <laughs> The world was stunned this week when Yasser Arafat was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Actually, it's not that remarkable when you consider this year's other nominees. Raul Cedras, Mickey Rourke, and the guy who stabbed Monica Seles. <laughs> well, it's been a disastrous week for President Clinton. His party lost control of the House and Senate, and 31 governorships are now in Republican hands. The only bright spot? He was completely exonerated in the murder of Bob Crane. <laughs> U.S. Air is beginning a campaign to restore passenger confidence. I think just two little words will do that. We've landed. <laughs> Talk show host Ricky Lake was arrested for vandalism after demonstrating against fur. She said wearing fur was in bad taste, then returned to her studio to tape a show entitled Why Whores Get the Clap. <laughs> Yeah, Ricky Lake, you know, uh, she is, really is an animal lover, though. She has three cats, two dogs, and a big ass that follows her around everywhere. <laughs> well, a beef-flavored water for dog hit stores this week, and dogs are eagerly uh, anticipating the arrival next month of the newest water flavor, Other Dogs' Asses. <laughs> Dr. James Watts, a neurosurgeon who performed the first frontal lobotomy, died this week in Washington. If you recall, a lobotomy involves drilling holes in the skull and then inserting and rotating a knife to destroy brain cells. What a genius, he'll be missed. <laughs> in a related story, three of Hollywood's most powerful men, David Geffen, Steven Spielberg, and Jeffrey Katzenberg, joined forces last week to form their own movie studio. When asked what sort of films we could expect from them, the trio replied, mostly pornos. <laughs> That's good news. Blimpies has started supplying subs for Delta Airlines to serve on its flight, and in return, Delta is giving Blimpies barf bags to hand out in its restaurants. <laughs> Finally this week, lawyers in the new O.J. Simpson trial actually found a prospective juror who claims to know nothing about O.J. Simpson, the murders, or the first trial, and who told the court, quote, I don't even know when it started or ended. Unfortunately, the man had to be disqualified when it was learned that he had been a juror in the first O.J. trial. <laughs> and finally, Weekend Update would like to congratulate Madonna, who gave birth to a beautiful baby girl last Monday. The baby weighed in at six pounds, nine ounces, making it the fourth largest object ever to pass through Madonna's birth canal. <laughs> Newly elected Governor George Pataki says he wants to bring the death penalty back to New York. First up, Mayor Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Judge Lance Ito this week barred all potential jurors from reading Faye Resnick's controversial new book, Nicole Brown Simpson, Life, Diary of a Life Interrupted. The judge also barred them from reading Faye Resnick's other new book entitled, Judge Lance Ito is a Big Fruit. <laughs> With Republican control of the Senate, Oregon's pa Bob Packwood will become chairman of the Senate Finance Committee. In a statement, he promised to massage the budget, goose interest rates, and, if possible, stick his tongue down the throat of inflation. <laughs> this week, Saddam Hussein pulled his troops back from the Kuwaiti border after realizing that a second invasion might hurt his chances for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> Cowboy legends Roy Roger and Dale Evans launched an internet site on the World Wide Web yesterday so hackers can learn more about the Western duo. The most asked question so far Hey, aren't you guys dead? <laughs> After 15-year-old Peggy Young of Irwin, Tennessee was caught skipping school, authorities sentenced her mother 
to three days in jail. So to all you kids out there, remember, party at Peggy's house. <laughs> A French government survey finds that Disneyland Paris is the most popular tourist attraction in the country and the most popular ride, women who don't shave their armpits of the Caribbean. <laughs> Serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer was attacked and killed by another inmate this week. Just uh, before the fight, Dahmer threatened, Hey, don't mess with me, pal. I used to eat guys like you for breakfast. <laughs> Hoping to impress a girl, Kevin Hall, 18 years old, stuck a sawed-off shotgun in his pants and blasted off his genitals. You know, I don't know the girl, but I'm guessing that uh, the stunt didn't work. <laughs> In an act of conciliation, China released eight political prisoners this week, but they made it clear that the other 79 million would be executed without a trial. <laughs> well, next year's Monkeys reunion tour will be the first to include all four original band members. That's because Michael Nesmith, who had not joined previous tours, has decided to come along. Nesmith, of course, is best known as the last original monkey to run out of money. <laughs> to discourage worship of the Dalai Lama, the Chinese government has banned all photos of the exiled Tibetan leader, except for this photo from the 70s. <laughs> In an interview out this week, Demi Moore says she would like to have another baby, this time a boy, to go along with her three daughters and two huge breasts. <laughs> Remember 12 Angry Men, the classic courtroom drama? Well, the first film about the O.J. Simpson case is in the works. It's entitled Nine Angry Black People, Two Scared Asians, and a White Guy Who Hasn't Spoken Since Rosa Lopez. <laughs> According to retailers, the most popular Halloween mask this year is O.J. Simpson. And the most popular Halloween greeting is I'll kill you and that guy who's bringing over your glasses or treat. <laughs> a French man who calls himself the Snake Man was arrested this week after climbing up the side of a Manhattan high rise. Yep, he climbed right up the side of a high rise. Just like a snake. President Clinton was in Austin, Texas last Monday, the day of the Million Man March. The president said in a speech, I'm here to speak to you today because right now in Washington, D.C., there's like a million black guys. <laughs> New York City doorman Lenny Ladenhoff nearly fell over from shock when Princess Diana confided to him that she was feeling horny and invited <laughs> him to drop by her hotel suite Thursday evening. Way to go, Lenny! George Foreman says his upcoming autobiography will be an inspiration to every American who has tried to reach the impossible dream. And in a related story, former heavyweight champion Michael Moore says that he wants his autobiography to be an inspiration to anyone who's ever been beaten up by an old man. <laughs> In a recent interview, Christy Brinkley suggested that football players should have special gloves connected to lights on their helmets. That way, when they catch the ball, you'll know who has possession. Read these and other interesting ideas in Christy's new book, I'm an Idiot. <laughs> Yippee, Jerry Rubin died last week. Oh, I'm sorry, that should read, uh, Yippee Jerry Rubin died last week. <laughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry. My mistake completely. Yoko Ono donated some John Lennon memorabilia to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this week. The items include his Sgt. Pepper uniform, an electric guitar he used at Shea Stadium, and the original handwritten lyrics to several songs that she ruined. <laughs> A study on weight loss revealed this week that women who participate 
in a weekly diet program, lost 50% more weight, snacked less, and bought more fruits and vegetables than women in general. Which just goes to prove my new theory, Richard Simmons is gay. <laughs> Michael Gold, an unemployed drifter, has been stalking model Naomi Campbell now for two years. He has been screaming obscenities, spitting, throwing garbage, and threatening to kill her. Well, after two long years, Naomi finally gave in. The couple will be married in June. <laughs> this week is Taxi Cab Appreciation Week, so to all you taxi cab drivers out there, I'd appreciate it if you'd take a shower once in a while. How's that go? Las Vegas mogul Steve Wynn has announced plans for a new hotel, 46 stories high, set on a 17-acre island in the middle of a 50-acre artificial lake on the Las Vegas Strip. In a related story, Motel 6 now has shampoo. <laughs> the actor who appeared in commercials for many years as the Marlboro Man has died of lung cancer. Asked if he contracted the disease by smoking, a spokesperson for the tobacco industry responded by saying, what's that behind you, then ran away. <laughs> and now it's time for Weekend Update's movie reviews. This week I saw Interview with the Vampire. And here's, here's my review. Um, not gay enough. A new hangover-free vodka is on the market. Yeah, the ads claim that the 80-proof vodka is so pure, it's virtually headache-free. But before you run out and buy it, remember, it causes massive anal bleeding. <laughs> In publishing news, Magic Johnson has received a $5 million advance from Random House for his new book entitled... What you can do to avoid AIDS. Chapter one, don't have sex with me. <laughs> New York City police charged this week that the 90-year-old mother of actor Peter Falk was systematically bilked out of $3 million in cash, jewels, and antiques by a con man. Hmm, Peter Falk's mother, huh, robbed? That sounds like a job for, for Matlock. Finally in the news, what is America's most honest city? To find out, a team of sociologists left 10 wallets filled with cash on the street in various urban centers. In Atlanta, seven of the wallets were returned. In Seattle, nine of the wallets were returned. But not surprisingly, in New York City, only one of the wallets was returned. Empty and shoved up some dead guy's ass. <laughs> A Brooklyn man crossing an expressway on Monday was hit by at least 10 cars. According to police, the man's body was spread over a two-block area. Police also reported that various organs were flattened on the road and that his spine had been ripped out of his torso. The man is currently resting in stable condition at St. Mary's Hospital. Simpson had been discussing marriage with girlfriend Paula Barbieri, but reportedly she has called the wedding off. Her fear was that if they married, she would be brutally murdered. And then, and then someone would try to pin it on OJ. <laughs> Last week, British entrepreneur Richard Brown launched a new soft drink, Virgin Cola. Apparently, months of research determined that people were turned off by the names Slut Cola and Dr. Whore. <laughs> well, according to a new Entertainment Weekly poll, 72% of their readers say they would not be offended if a TV show lead character were gay. Though that figure shrinks to 1% when these same readers are reminded that being gay can involve anal sex. <laughs> Judge Ito was interviewed this week by a local TV station in Los Angeles 
Asked by the interviewer if it was appropriate for a supposedly impartial judge to be on TV with his case still pending, Ito said, maybe not, but how appropriate is it to kill your ex-wife? <laughs> A female prostitute who was mistaken for a man spent 15 hours in the men's jail in Denver where she had consensual sex with two male prisoners, making that the first time anyone at any time in any prison ever has ever had consensual sex. <laughs> well, Tom Cruise got ready for the premiere of his new movie, Interview with the Vampire, by sucking all the blood out of wife Nicole's. <laughs> Former Playboy centerfold and guest jeans model Anna Nicole Smith collapsed this week after she suddenly realized that she actually had sex with this guy. <laughs> well, there may be trouble in paradise. Lisa Marie Presley confirmed this week that she and Michael Jackson live in separate residences 50 miles away from each other. Lisa Marie was quoted as saying, I guess being married to a homosexual pedophile wasn't such a great idea after all. <laughs> O.J. Simpson was in a different courtroom this week, attempting to regain custody of his two children. In order to prove to the court how much he loves his kids, O.J. pointed out, quote, hey, they're still alive, aren't they? According to an obscure 14th century law, British Army Captain James Hewitt could be hanged for having an affair with Princess Diana. The punishment for having sex with Princess Diana is death. The punishment for having sex with Princess Anne is having sex with Princess Anne. <laughs> In Virginia, in Virginia, police are looking for a stripper who stabbed a man for telling her she was too fat to strip. Police warn that the woman is armed and extremely fat. <laughs> Last week, Queen Elizabeth won 10 pounds in her country's national lottery. However, she has no plans to quit her job as Queen of England. Yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew. You think I didn't know? <laughs> Helmut Kohl was elected to his fourth term as Germany's chancellor this week. Experts say Mr. Kohl's success was guaranteed after he won the backing of singing sensation David Hasselhoff. <laughs> which once again proves my old theory, Germans love David Hasselhoff. <laughs> it was revealed today that O.J. Simpson told police that Nicole Brown Simpson used to beat him up he also claimed that she and Ron Goldman killed him. <laughs> and yes, it is true, Michael Jackson is going to be a father. Already he has hired an entire staff of nannies, nurses, and extra bodyguards, which hopefully will protect the child from Michael Jackson. <laughs> Former First Lady Nancy Reagan reports that her husband has been relaxing at their ranch, riding horses and chopping wood. Sadly, eyewitnesses report that he was actually riding wood and chopping horses. <laughs> the new ad campaign for Duracell batteries is already having a dramatic effect. Over 70% of consumers say they now find the batteries, quote, creepy and disturbing. This weekend, veteran news anchorman David Brinkley apologized to Bill Clinton for an election night commentary in which he called the president, quote, boring and uncreative. Admitted Brinkley, there was certainly nothing uncreative about the way you moved Vince Foster's body. <laughs> President's a murderer, you didn't know that? Uh. The, the Brazilian teenager suing Michael Jackson for running him over with his van displayed his scars for a photographer this week. Jackson said through a spokesman that the suit was baseless, but he'd like to see more photos. <laughs> the cast of Baywatch made a special appearance at Disney World in Florida, where they were mobbed by adoring fans. 
which proves my new theory. German tourists love David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Against the Jets last week, Buffalo Bills running back Thurman Thomas broke O.J. Simpson's career rushing record, and the week before, he surpassed Simpson in career touchdowns. Next up for Thomas, an attempt to kill three people at once. <laughs> Researchers have developed a so-called red wine pill, which gives all the benefits of red wine without the alcohol. Yeah, it's called a grape. <laughs> a two-inch hummingbird that waited too long to fly south and ended up stranded in Alaska will be flown via a commercial airline to California this week. You know, I have another solution to this. Kill the hummingbird. In what is considered a remarkably short period of time, the head of the Federal Advisory Board, Dr. Peter Melman, has given speedy approval to a controversial new anti-obesity drug. It should be noted, however, Dr. Melman's wife is a fat pig. And finally, in honor of the 50th anniversary of their first publication, Random House will be releasing special commemorative issues of many Dr. Seuss classics. The first to hit the bookshelves will be Green Eggs and Ham and O.J. is Guilty. And our final story, Ted Kennedy says now that he's won re-election, he can finally relax, get off that crazy diet, and really let himself go. Julia Roberts told reporters this week that her marriage to Lyle Lovett has been over for some time. The key moment, she said, came when she realized that she was Julia Roberts and that she was married to Lyle Lovett. <laughs> PLO leader Yasser Arafat announced this week that his wife is pregnant. The happy couple said they really don't care if the child is a boy or a girl, just as long as it hates Jews. A sheepdog carrying $250,000 worth of cocaine in its stomach was found at JFK Airport earlier this week. A customs agent got suspicious when he saw two airline employees taking turns sniffing the dog's ass. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Washington, Mayor Marion Barry praised the verdict as, quote, wise and just. And he called upon people of all races to please get him some crack. <laughs> and finally, twin daughters have been born to Andrew and Carrie Kennedy Cuomo, making former New York Governor Mario Cuomo a grandfather. The girls were named Pataki and Sucks. <laughs> In economic news, the Mexican peso yesterday sank to an all-time low as it showed up drunk to a family reunion and hit on its cousin, the Centavo. <laughs> Officials in Disney World have ordered their ride, the Extra Terror Estriel, to be shut down until it can be made scarier. When the attraction reopens in two weeks, it will be exactly the same, but missing six bolts. <laughs> Well, next Tuesday is Halloween, or as evil old people know it, Razor Apple Day. <laughs> and in a touching Valentine's Day gesture, a man gave his wife one of his own kidneys. Terrified, she dropped the kidney and ran out of the restaurant screaming. <laughs> Airline travelers' complaints have risen 22% over the last year. The single most common complaint was they lost my baggage, followed closely by, I didn't like being in that fiery plane crash. <laughs> and O.J. pal Al Cowling said this week that in looking for the truth in the O.J. Simpson case, he sometimes talks to a picture of Nicole Brown Simpson, something that in the past would have gotten him killed by O.J. 
The U.S. Postal Service this week canceled plans for a stamp commemorating the bombing of Hiroshima. They will instead release a different stamp. Here it is that uh, hopefully we'll, people will find it less offensive, that one. A new study says that people who quit smoking have healthier lungs. Yet another groundbreaking story from the pages of the medical journal, Duh. <laughs> Here we see the president and the first bitch. <laughs> hey, hey, slow down, you bitch. Let me catch up. I, I <laughs> At Virginia Commonwealth University, a professor is being sued following revelations that he spanked one of his students. It was the student's parents who first became suspicious when they asked, what kind of marks are you getting? And she replied, big red ones on my ass. So. <laughs> Singer Billy Joel survived the massive earthquake which rocked Japan this week. The quake which hit the sports city of Kobe killed nearly 5,000 people and demolished hundreds of buildings. To repeat, do not panic. Billy Joel has survived the earthquake. <laughs> OJ's pal Al Cowlings now has a 1-900 number. For $2.99 a minute, Cowlings will tell callers that OJ is innocent. And for $3.99 a minute, he'll try to do it without laughing. <laughs> In Detroit, under a new prison rehabilitation program called Fresh Start, employers will get a tax break if they hire an ex-convict. Employers who hire more than one ex-convict will get robbed and killed. <laughs> Secretary of State Warren Christopher this week again offered to quit his job, saying he's sick of being a damn secretary. <laughs> it took a Long Island jury 10 hours to convict Colin Ferguson this week. It then took them 13 hours to walk across the street for lunch and 27 hours to eat it. <laughs> and finally this week, Jean Calmont of France turned 120 years, 238 days old, making her the oldest person who has ever lived. And though she can no longer shop for herself, see friends, or even get out of bed, she still has enough strength to say, oh God, I want to die. <laughs> Here we see President Clinton looking for something, anything, to hug besides his wife. <laughs> this week, a court banned gays from marching in Boston's St. Patrick's Day Parade, but they will still allow them to be beaten up by drunken Irish guys. <laughs> this was Colin Ferguson's first week in prison. Ferguson has reportedly dismissed his cellmate, and from now on, he will be acting as his own bitch. Finally, the Oscar nominations were announced this week, and Tom Hanks and Jodie Foster are in a heated competition in the Academy's controversial new category, Best Retard. <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer's relatives are reportedly fighting over what to do with his body. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, some want to have sex with it, while the rest want to put it in the fridge. So that's, uh... Actor Arnold Schwarzenegger is vehemently denying accusations that he is the father of a 12-year-old girl living in Texas. You know, it's hard to believe, Arnold, you know, especially considering that this is a picture of the girl. <laughs> a 51-year-old cosmonaut set a world space endurance record this week after spending 367 days aboard the Russian space station Mir. 
And also, as a side note, he also smashed his own masturbation record. <laughs> In an effort to feel smarter than somebody, Dan Quayle this week spoke to 4,000 Amway employees. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.S. Army is dealing with a scandal of its own as dozens of female recruits have charged drill instructors with sexual harassment, intimidation, and even sexual assault. Analysts are calling it the best argument yet for gays in the military. This week, President Clinton played golf with ex-presidents Gerald Ford and George Bush. Bush hit an old lady in the face with a golf ball, giving her a broken nose and ten stitches. But uh, don't be impressed, it took him five strokes to do it, so... Jimmy Carter has written a collection of poetry. It includes his latest poem, entitled, Ode to a Country Full of Stupid, Ungrateful Bastards. Young or old, male or female, everyone loves to visit the White House. <laughs> well, a study this week reports seafood is good for you unless it's fried. Yet another groundbreaking story from the pages of the medical journal, Duh. Well, the Grammy Award nominations were announced this week, and it was a lucky day for singer Billy Ray Cyrus. Apparently, he found a $5 bill in a taxi. <laughs> Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry has prostate cancer, but the disease was detected early, and he expects a full recovery. Doctors say in no time, Barry will be up and around and smoking crack again. <laughs> According to a survey, 58% of men would have sex with a woman they disliked. Although, while having sex, they would really, really like them, and then afterwards, not like them again. <laughs> a blind man felt Princess Diana's face last week and said she is the prettiest woman I've ever seen. He then picked up a toilet plunger and said, Thank you for this royal scepter. I shall treasure it always. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II visited Russia this week, becoming the first English monarch to set foot in the Soviet Union. The visit, which will last for two weeks, is expected to have absolutely no effect on anything whatsoever. <laughs> and now a correction to a story we ran last week. Prince Charles is actually the one in the middle. <laughs> so we... We apologize for that. In an interview this week, Bob Dole said he is strong enough to handle the pain of losing the presidential election. Although he did admit that the shock of winning would give him a giant heart attack. <laughs> Here's an amazing story. Twins born 95 days apart. Even more amazing, they were born to different mothers and they don't even look alike. <laughs> Scientists have discovered that rats with spinal cord injuries were able to walk again after being treated with a combination drug therapy. That's good news, huh? Getting all those rats up and around again? <laughs> on Wall Street last week, trading was very heavy on the big board. Why? Because it's a big board. What are you, nuts? According to the National Transportation Safety Board, sleepy truckers are responsible for 1,000 deaths a year. In second place, O.J. Simpson at two deaths a year. <laughs> in Walnut Creek, California, anyone who turns in his gun can get free therapy. And anyone who doesn't turn in his gun can get free anything. <laughs> Talk show host Ricky Lake has announced that she will finally publicly apologize for her role in a destructive anti-fur demonstration. Then she will eat a huge can of frosting. <laughs> 130 years after the Civil War, the state of Mississippi has finally voted to abolish slavery. Representatives say they would have liked to have done it sooner, but uh, they were delayed due to some awfully big cotton crops. They had to... Had some... Big cotton thing. 
A new FBI study shows that for the first time, Americans are more likely to be killed by a stranger than a loved one or acquaintance. Their advice? Introduce yourself to as many people as possible. <laughs> a new book claims that Madonna once smeared peanut butter all over John F. Kennedy Jr.'s body and then licked it off. Which just goes to show you, Madonna's a whore. <laughs> Well, let's get to O.J. O.J. Simpson's lawyers say they don't want the families of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman in the courtroom during the trial. They're afraid the presence of the family members will just remind O.J. of how much more killing he still has to do. <laughs> well, O.J. Simpson's lawyers stopped feuding this week, finally. The Dream Team, F. Lee Bailey and Robert Shapiro, were able to put aside their differences and express their admiration for each other after O.J. threatened to cut their heads off. <laughs> In the December issue of Playboy, 60 Minutes reporter Mike Wallace reveals that he has not only smoked marijuana, but that it made him sexually aroused. According to Wallace, he made these comments in an effort to frighten young people off sex and drugs forever. <laughs> After 50 years entertaining children, a fed-up Mickey Mouse finally started to eat one this week. <laughs> a one-legged goose with a dart in its head. And I complain about my life, you know? It's tougher for the one-legged goose. Hey, Lisa Marie Presley said that she and Michael are still together and happy this week. She also made a revelation that she is actually a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> and O.J. announced this week that he's coming out with a new book called I Want to Tell You. And if it's successful, O.J. will work on yet another book entitled From Football to Prison, My 25 Years of Showering with Other Men. <laughs> The United Paramount Network's new show, Star Trek Voyager, finished in first place Monday night with a 14.7 rating. For those of you who don't know, one rating point is equal to 950,000 nerds. <laughs> well, there's good news this week from strife-torn Ireland, where a historic peace agreement has just been signed. Gee, I wonder if anyone will celebrate by drinking. Last week, as Pat Buchanan announced his decision to run for president, several people jumped on stage chanting, Buchanan is a racist. As security began to wrestle them from the stage, Buchanan stopped them and said, let them continue, that's my slogan. <laughs> this week in South Africa, Winnie Mandela was removed from the new government by her husband, President Nelson Mandela. A curious Bill Clinton later called Mr. Mandela to find out how exactly you go about doing something like that. Well, in a questionable move by the defense team this week, O.J. Simpson demonstrated how to stab two people at the same time. A bad week for the prosecution of the O.J. Simpson trial. Under intense cross-examination by defense lawyer Barry Sheck, LAPD crime expert Dennis Fung admitted that he may have contaminated the crime scene when he accidentally dropped a big bucket full of O.J.'s DNA. <laughs> Our top story tonight this week in the O.J. Simpson trial. After grisly photos of the murdered Nicole Brown Simpson were shown in court, O.J. turned his head away and wept. It was at that moment that he realized he would never be able to kill her again. Was O.J. Simpson high on speed the night of the murders? Absolutely not, said defense attorney Johnny Cochran today. And a simple test of any of O.J.'s blood found at the crime scene will prove it. <laughs> In medical news this week, scientists report there may soon be a vaccine for drug addicts, which completely eliminates the craving for cocaine. They caution, however, 
that the vaccine is extremely dangerous, highly addictive, and costs $10,000 a gram. <laughs> Dismissed Simpson juror Jeanette Harris revealed in interviews this week that the jury is torn by dissension and is already divided into two camps, those who think he is guilty and those who are really, really stupid. <laughs> Republican presidential candidate Phil Graham of Texas said yesterday that if he and President Clinton met in the general election next year, he would, quote, chew him up and spit him out. President Clinton, on the other hand, says he would take Graham, deep fry him, dip him in mayonnaise, and swallow him whole. <laughs> this week at the O.J. Simpson trial, the infamous bloody glove was finally introduced into evidence, and O.J. didn't help his case any by blurting out, there it is, I've been looking all over for that thing. <laughs> Israeli, Israeli security forces have rounded up over 150 suspects in last week's suicide bombings. Suspects in the suicide bombings. Huh? Well, here's a hint. Look for the dead guys. And, uh, well, the nerve gas sarin, which was used in the Tokyo subway attack, is a colorless, odorless substance that swiftly paralyzes the respiratory system, fills the lungs with fluid, and drowns its victims. But it's still better than anything on the Warner Brothers Network. So that... <laughs> and a new shocker in the O.J. Simpson trial. This afternoon, Judge Lance Ito dismissed yet another juror, a 45-year-old African-American male, for failing to tell the court that he had once worked for Hertz Rent-A-Car and that he had once held Nicole Brown Simpson's glasses while O.J. killed her. <laughs> Scientists in Japan have invented underwear for men with a special scent that they claim is irresistible to women. Let me tell you something. If you've got a woman's nose in your crotch, you don't need special underwear. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Senator Bob Packwood said this week he favors reduced federal deficit over a tax cut. Then he added that in case anyone was curious, he prefers nice legs over large breasts. <laughs> the much-talked-about film Showgirls opened this week, and here's my review. Basically a high-budget porno film, Showgirls is a thinly-veiled excuse to show lots of naked buttocks, legs, and breasts. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 10. <laughs> Well, how about this, huh? You know it makes me sick when a society lets a guy like Colin Ferguson live for another 200 years. It's <laughs> ridiculous. It's crazy. Well, Monica Sella said this week she doesn't like to watch women's tennis anymore. Hey, join the club, lady, all right? <laughs> well, Premier Magazine's list of the 100 most powerful people in Hollywood hit the newsstands this month. In an odd bit of ranking, Demi Moore was ranked number 28, while her breasts were ranked 20 and 21. So, <laughs> Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry is currently enjoying a 10-day trip to Africa. He says he loves everything about the continent, but he really misses crack. <laughs> Dr. William A. Moffat, the world's leading authority on the Dead Sea Scrolls, died this week at age 62. The cause of death? The curse of the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> Last week, Duchess of York Sarah Ferguson visited the Big Apple and showed off her 14-pound weight loss. Hopefully, this will not interfere with her official duties of sitting on her fat ass all day long. <laughs> Testimony during the final week provided some spellbinding moments. In a brilliant move during closing arguments, Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran put on the knit cap prosecutors say O.J. wore the night he committed the murders. Although O.J. may have heard his case when he suddenly blurted out, hey, hey, easy with that. That's my lucky stabbing hat. <laughs> Well, Gary Busey left the hospital this week after overdosing on cocaine last Friday. Doctors say Busey is okay and he should be back in the hospital in no time. 
Meanwhile, Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry attended the march and called it a beautiful display of unity and solidarity among African Americans. His only complaint, the complete absence of crack. <laughs> The most restrictive smoking ban in the nation took effect this week in New York, and already the city has gained over 9,000 pounds. <laughs> For the fifth year in a row, People magazine has named John F. Kennedy Jr. one of its 50 most beautiful people. Meanwhile... <laughs> meanwhile, uh, Big Red Nose magazine has named Ted Kennedy one of its 50 faces most ravaged by drink. New medical research shows that men and women have different food cravings. Men preferring meat and women preferring sweets. Scientists trace this back to caveman days when men had to go out and hunt for food while women sat on their fat asses eating chocolates. <laughs> Hertz rental car company announced this week that it will buy 520,000 vehicles increasing its worldwide fleet 24 percent. In addition, they will try to find a new spokesman who won't kill his ex-wife. <laughs> In New Jersey, Patty, a four-month-old pit bull who had been beaten senseless by his owner, was given a new home. While his former owner serves two weeks in jail for the beating, veterinarians say that it will take four to six weeks until Patty is fully recovered and ready to eat babies again. <laughs> In Arkansas, a 25-year-old man has been arrested for going door-to-door, -door, attempting to trade sticks of dynamite for sex or drugs. <laughs> this disturbing case has people all across the nation asking themselves the same question. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Actor Charlie Sheen is reportedly engaged to model Donna Peel. Friends of Sheen say they knew Sheen was serious when he took Donna home to meet the hookers. <laughs> Leona Helmsley fired a maid this week for stealing her Victoria's Secret lingerie. And you think she looks hot here, huh? Imagine if you would with the... The, maf the Mafia announced that they will drop their time-honored greeting of gently kissing each other on the cheek this week. But as for shooting people and stuffing them in the trunks of cars, full steam ahead. <laughs> Our top story tonight, following his shocking acquittal two weeks ago, O.J. Simpson vowed never to rest until the real killers of Nicole Brown Simpson are brought to justice. And the manhunt continues. <laughs> An 83-year-old Wisconsin woman who survived in her broken-down car for eight days on just fruit juice and frost was rescued last week by family and friends, and they gave her a big welcome-home dinner. But in an ironic twist, they unknowingly served up as the main course fruit juice and frost. <laughs> In stock market news this week, April's three biggest losers were Cantab Pharmaceuticals, Champion Enterprises, and uh, Crapco, which manufactures crap. <laughs> and also crap-related items, most recently uh, Mariah Carey's Christmas album. They were... <laughs> and in California, a new restaurant is opened exclusively for dogs. Their specialty? A fried chicken dinner said to be scrotum-licking good. <laughs> the American Academy of Pediatrics has released an updated list of unsafe baby products. Topping the list this year is the really, 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 really high chair. <laughs> In Carlsbad, Texas, a tanker truck crashed into a prison bus, injuring 16 inmates. Doctors say it will be at least two weeks before the men are up and around and raping each other again. <laughs> to 
illustrate the point that their client is running out of money to defend himself, O.J. Simpson's lawyer said this week that if he had to do it over again, after killing his victims, O.J. would now rob them as well. <laughs> Angry over the Atlanta Braves and Cleveland Indians' use of Indian caricatures as logos, Native Americans showed up at the World Series tonight. They chanted for hours to protest Indian stereotypes, though it didn't help their cause any when it uh, started to rain. <laughs> Demi Moore is wrapped filming on G.I. Jane, in which she plays a Navy, Navy SEAL combat officer. Moore says that in contrast to other Hollywood portrayals of women in the military, her character will have giant breasts. <laughs> Well, it is finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. <laughs> Meanwhile, this week, O.J. took girlfriend Paula Barbieri to see the erotic murder mystery, Jade. Other moviegoers took the couple's presence in stride, though they did become uncomfortable when O.J. repeatedly out, shouted out, You call that a stabbing? That's... <laughs> In the course of his summation, Cochran also brought up Detective Mark Furman, calling him a, quote, genocidal racist and comparing him to Adolf Hitler. Furman later responded, after all the things he said about me during this trial, it's a little late to start sucking up now. <laughs> Two hours after the verdict, L.A. police had their first solid lead in the hunt for the real killers. A new witness has come forward who saw three men fleeing the crime scene the night of the murders. Police have released this sketch and would like to hear from anyone who has seen these three individuals. Straight to the heart I went a long time acting like I was a bro Get apart by you in court this week, Cato Kalin testified that O.J. Simpson did not appear angry before or after the period of his wife's murder. But Kalin admitted he could have been a touch edgy while he was actually murdering her. <laughs> Might have been a... An intoxicated man was decapitated by a moving subway train this week after he fell off the platform while trying to show off for a woman he didn't know. The stunt worked, the two will be married in June. <laughs> On Tuesday at 1.15, the moment the Simpson verdict was delivered, Court TV scored its highest ratings ever. An hour later, the channel went out of business. <laughs> the Menendez brothers are back in court. They now claim that they shotgunned their mother and father over 20 times because they feared their parents possessed supernatural powers. Though they now admit, looking back on it, they were, they were probably wrong. <laughs> Texas millionaire J. Howard Marshall may have died two months ago, but as we see here, he and wife Anna Nicole Smith can still enjoy a romantic evening at home. <laughs> when Simpson trial juror Gina Rodborough returned home this week, her little girls were delighted to have her back. And no wonder, she lets him get away with murder. <laughs> Last Tuesday in Mexico's election for the regional assembly, leftist opposition party thugs burned ballot boxes, detained election officials, and threatened voters with violence. Mexican authorities are calling it their most successful election ever. <laughs> Former Wilson Phillips member Carney Wilson's new talk show kicked off this month. According to Carney, her show will be different from the others in that guests will be treated with respect and dignity. And then she will eat them. <laughs> the first Miss America, Margaret Gorman Cahill, died this week at the age of 90. A call-in vote will determine whether she'll be buried in a bathing suit or evening gown. <laughs>
A Labor Department task force says it will crack down on sweatshops in New York's Chinatown, where employees work 90-hour weeks for as little as 75 cents an hour. A spokesman for the sweatshop owner said, quote, that's all we can afford to pay. This is a sweatshop. We make sweat. <laughs> At a press conference this week, Washington Mayor Marion Barry said he wants private businesses to provide 5,000 summer jobs for a district youth program. He also wants some crack. <laughs> And in music news, number one on the college charts this summer was Better Than Ezra. And at number two, Ezra. <laughs> Attorney General Janet Reno has assembled a task force to determine whether federal campaign finance laws were violated by Democrats, Republicans, or both. Another task force will attempt to determine whether Attorney General Reno is a man, a woman, or both. <laughs> Meanwhile, Elton John continues to deny rumors that he is engaged to his tennis racket. <laughs> and uh, finally, physicist Stephen Hawking, who is wheelchair-bound and speaks through a computer voice box, was married earlier this month for a second time. You guys out there who can't get a date, start feeling sorry for yourselves now. <laughs> a brother and sister in Florida carried on a sexual relationship for nearly 20 years, and now a judge must decide what to do with the eight children that their incestuous union produced. Hey, how about keeping them the hell away from each other? How about that? <laughs> In Washington, D.C., reporter Alan Etter was doing a story on violence at a local high school when he was attacked and severely beaten by a gang of students. The assailants say they have nothing against the reporter. They just love irony. <laughs> Finally, folks, next week, Jews everywhere will be celebrating the holiday of Yom Kippur. Or, as non-Jews refer to it, Wednesday. <laughs> and that's all for now, folks. Good night. Though more indictments are likely in the Whitewater investigation, President Clinton is still refusing to say whether he will pardon former Whitewater associates Jim and Susan McDougal. But when asked if he would pardon First Lady Hillary Clinton, the president was crystal clear. Quote, she does the crime, she does the time. <laughs> According to newly released confidential memos, presidents of the nation's largest tobacco companies decided as early as 1964 that cigarettes should contain increasingly higher and higher levels of nicotine. Asked to comment, a spokesman for the tobacco industry said, really, that's interesting, then got plastic surgery and moved to France. <laughs> While jogging on the beach in San Diego this weekend, President Clinton was berated by tourist Valerie Parker, who shouted at him, quote, you're a draft-dodging, yellow-bellied liar, and you're a disgrace to the office of the presidency, to your gender, and to this nation. And then added, I'm still going to vote for you. <laughs> Texaco Oil, reeling from the public outcry over racist remarks made by some of its top executives at a tape-recorded meeting, Today announced a dramatic change in company policy. No more tape-recorded meetings. <laughs> During a recent interview on 2020, longtime O.J. Simpson friend Robert Kardashian said he now believes Simpson may be guilty. Though he did add that had he believed O.J. was guilty at the time, he never would have agreed to hide his bloody clothes and knife. <laughs> Walt Disney Company has announced plans to build a $300 million hotel and entertainment complex in New York's Times Square. Construction begins next spring on their first attraction, Crack Horrors of the Caribbean. <laughs> At a campaign stop in Florida Thursday, a frustrated Bob Dole told a reporter, quote, something's wrong with America. I wonder sometimes what people are thinking about if people are thinking at all. At which point the reporter said, 
Can you repeat that? I was thinking about how I'm voting for Bill Clinton, and I... <laughs> Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry is in hot water again this time for bringing 54 government employees with him on a trip to a posh West Virginia resort. According to Barry, quote, that's how many guys it takes to keep me from smoking crack. <laughs> Well, Jocelyn Elder's new book, Jocelyn Elder's M.D., came out this week. I read it. <laughs> and a, uh, a priest, a priest says that he got Dahmer to believe in God before he died. Asked if this would get Dahmer into heaven, the priest said, uh, no, but it was fun to make him think so. Pop singer Madonna was outraged this week when a tabloid photographer snapped her picture while she was breastfeeding her new baby. Apparently, the baby was blocking her nipple. <laughs> Last week in Calcutta, India, Mother Teresa suffered a slight concussion when she slipped and bumped her head. Doctors say the 86-year-old nun is completely back to normal, except for one interesting difference. She now hates poor people. <laughs> London tabloids report that model Jerry Hall has filed for divorce from Mick Jagger, ending a 20-year relationship, although I'm sure this is a difficult time for Mick. You know, it must be kind of exciting after 20 years, now he finally gets a chance to sleep with other women. So that'll be... <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob Dole brought his struggling presidential campaign to New Jersey, vowing, in his words, to prove Yogi Berra was right when he said, it ain't over till it's over. Reached for comment, Yogi Berra said, it's over. <laughs> in Topeka, Kansas, the fire department is now using a new weapon to fight arson, a black Labrador trained to sniff out chemicals used in setting fires. Although it should be noted, if this dog is correct, the culprit in every arson fire this month is uh, some other dog's ass. <laughs> the New York Post reported last week that a prostitute charged with leaving her four youngest children alone in their roach-infested Brooklyn apartment had been under investigation for years as a negligent mother. What's more, apparently the woman was also a really lousy prostitute. <laughs> Nikki Barkutis, a young woman whose wealthy family owns a chain of profitable restaurants in New York, has won $23 million in the New York Lotto. This raises an interesting question. Nikki Barkutis, will you marry me? <laughs> in England, a much publicized videotape of a naked Princess Diana having sex with her lover, Captain James Hewitt, has turned out to be a fake. But on the bright side, it's uh, still a video of two naked people having sex. <laughs> the New York City Transit Authority plans to put up signs in subway stations asking city residents to be more polite when getting on and off the subway. Most New Yorkers say the idea sounds great and that the new signs will make excellent urinals. After initially vowing never to rest until his wife's killers are brought to justice, O.J. Simpson this week changed his pledge slightly. He now vows to have sex with hot-looking models. <laughs> Doctors have discovered that deer hunters are at an unusually high risk for stress-related heart attacks. Also at high risk for stress-related heart attacks, deer. Standing outside a New York City courtroom this week, Paula Jones was berated by passing New Yorkers who called her names such as slut and whore. Observers say the situation grew even worse when the crowd realized who she was. <laughs> Two 23-year-old women in China this week have set a record living 12 days in a room with 888 deadly snakes. They now hold a place, a coveted place, in the Guinness Book of World Retard. <laughs> in other book news, Prince Charles released an autobiography in which he states that he never loved Princess Di and that his father pressured him to marry her. The book is entitled, A 
Of course O.J. did it. I mean, come on. 80-year-old Frank Sinatra, recovering from a bout of pneumonia, was apparently well enough last Saturday to bet daughter Tina Sinatra that Mike Tyson would defeat Evander Holyfield. Well, Tina made him pay the $10, although later he had his people rough her up and take back the money. <laughs> Kenny G has a Christmas album out this year. Hey, happy birthday, Jesus. Hope you like crap. <laughs> At an emotional press conference this week, a now exonerated Richard Jewell spoke about his ordeal as the chief suspect in the Olympic Park bombing. Quote, I couldn't think straight, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, he said. Then later he admitted, all right, I could eat. I, uh... <laughs> I couldn't sleep, though. I had trouble.